pretty. Um, I, just looking around, we do not have a quorum, uh, but we don't have any action items on the agenda. So if everybody's okay, and Mr. Hoff or Madam Clerk will bless it, can we just go through the agenda and just talk about stuff? We can have discussion as long as there's no action on it. Yeah. All right, is everybody okay with doing that? Yeah. All right, well then I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first item of business, Madam Clerk, is roll call. Bruce Paulson. Here. Ron Buckholz. Present. Jesse Betcher. Here. Mark Helley. Brian Bizonette. Kevin Sheckett. Okay, let the record show we don't have a quorum, but we're going to do discussion only. Uh, did we comply with the open meetings law, Madam Clerk? The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Public comments, Ms. Zilmer, I see you have a comment. Do you want to? Yes, uh, I have a general comment for public comments for I just not on the agenda. And we request that um, the supervisors take a look at the Norfolk Regional Planning website as far as what the Comprehensive Planning Update Committee has been working on. Uh, I understand that um, there's possibly a public uh, open house, but maybe only virtually on that coming up at the end of July. And I know Jay has sent out letters to all department heads asking for feedback. I have no really response. And that is, and what's been worked on has not been discussed at committees at all. So if, I think there, it's time to have more public involvement and county supervisor involvement. And then if I could please be recognized on items 11 and 12. Sure. When we get to discussions there. Sure. Right. And the comprehensive plan is under zoning, isn't it, Brian? Yeah. All right. Yes, it is. Good. All right. Next item of business is a. Well, I guess we can approve the minutes. We'll just delay those until the next meeting when we have a quorum. Any events or anything like that, Greg, that we've got to approve? We can't no, approve. Not this month. Good. All right. Nothing from the treasurer, no uh, over the counter land sales or anything. Okay. All right. Land records, county surveyor. Don't have much to report from land records, uh, property listing. I think they're up to date within a day right now. Wow. Which we've been working on it. Um, a lot of addressing. There's so many new people applying for address and stuff right now. It's been probably just about a half time job for a person. It is. To just that much. Um, I check all the certified survey maps in the county. We're up 55% over last year. There's still a, just a huge amount of real estate activity. All right. Survey crew, I'm, they've only got two people on short one. So one person would get along and we're only kidding with okay. one person right now. So. Are you, um, Trying to fill that third position? Any takers? It's only a, yeah, it's a second. I got two crew. No, I've got, I've had one applicant in over a month. Okay. That's, that's not good, right? No, it's not good. Okay. All right. Any, any questions for uh, the surveyor on his report? Okay. Forestry department, motorized yep. trails, anything, sir? Yes. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I got to bring it to your attention here. We had a little incident June 19th. There was a bicycle race going on, and I talked to Greg about it here. Um, got complaints from some of the ATV people. They were stopped by some of the bicycle people and told that the ATV trail was closed. That was not the case, but they were told, and, and there were some upset people on both sides here that the ATVs were on the trail. So, this is not the first time that's happened. There's been a couple of different bike races where it's it's come about that uh, it's years been told that the trails been closed. So just want to bring it to your attention on that. Um, Were these county forest trails? Yes. 
They were. Yes. Okay. So, so Greg is aware of it. Um, okay. These were those not good. Who we, what you've had, Canva sponsored? Uh, no, not not Canva sponsored. Uh, this was the uh, Schwamigan 100. Um, we've had issues with this event in the past. Um, we've had complaints from both user groups about some of the activities associated with this, this event that we had problems with the uh, permitting process with this one coming in. So. Um, I'm in contact with the event organizers. They had no authority to close the trails. You know, at, at a minimum, you know, they can have somebody at a trail crossing and, and hold, right? You know, right? You know, for for a right of way issue. But uh, it's something I think we'll look at when when this event comes back up for uh, renewal for right. next year. So there's a, there's a couple of different issues that we got to sort right. through. So. so this is a private, yeah, two private individuals running it. Okay, running it. Yep. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. So I just want to make sure that you're aware right. of it, you know, because on a busy weekend, it, it's hard. You know, we can work around certain things, but especially this section of the trail, there's no no other way to get around it. So okay. um, on that, um, the other thing is we've had some complaints on dust issues there. Hopefully with the rain we got yesterday, that a curb thing, but some of the trails that are close to the highways and that, um, there's some concerns there on the dystopia and that. And other than that, everything's been great. A lot of traffic here over Fourth of July. I mean, mm -hmm. all over out on the trails and downtown, and everything for ATVs and and everything else has been very good. Good. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Broken? Okay. Good. And I don't, I don't see anybody here for non-motorized. Okay. County Forest. Yeah, I'll just run through real quick. I hope you had a chance to review the report, but uh, we've had seven sales listed active in June. Uh, sale value on file right now is just over uh, 4.3 million. Revenue for the month was uh, just under 70,000. So our year to date is uh, 1.1 million and some change. So we're on target there. Uh, sale revenue build out right now is 180,000. Uh, sale inspections are on target for our activity levels. Uh, we did get a few tracks written up and turned in. Uh, the foresters have been doing a bit more uh, uh, office work during this weather, so we're catching up on our paperwork that way. Recons on target. Um, we're still going on GNA, uh, our contract, and uh, in between my report and now, we did receive our reimbursement for year 21 sale administration and the stands contract. Uh, that was a reimbursement of $11,299. Currently, we're, we're getting ready to uh, finalize the contract for year 22, which we would start working on at, at the fiscal year, so right now. Um, nothing more to report there. A um, little bit of update on some legislative action. The mill bill um, that uh, the, the state Senate and Assembly have been working on, it passed the Senate, but it failed to uh, pass the Assembly. Um, <clears throat> There was an amendment that uh, the governor wanted in there. Um, and when it got to assembly, I, I don't think they moved on it at all. Um, there's some doubts about if they can use that rescue uh, rescue plan money, mm -hmm. you know, to fund the, the two mills. So right. I think that's the hang up right now. So they're not sure if they can use it. So if they have to use state money for it, then it's probably not going to come through the, the assembly at all. So. Okay. It's kind of looking like there's not going to be action on this and probably till September or something like that. All right. Okay. Um, and you said we're on budget. Best you, best you know we're going to make the budget. I think so, yeah. Okay. All it's, right. It's well, early for that, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm practicing up for September. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good right now. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions on the forestry report? Okay, DNR, you're up. Okay, um, I have with me today Josh Spiegel. He's going to address some wildlife issues here uh, when I'm done, but uh, just some follow up on the previous meeting. Uh, there's a question that was raised about late winter fish kill. Um, I talked to Max Wolter, and he had received one other phone call about this, and he figured um, due to the early uh, warm up, 
which was a kind of above normal temperatures at that time of the year and the fish spawning, they were kind of put under stress. And those were kind of the two factors together and kind of likely contributed to the fish kill. Um, these kind of incidents are not a concern if they're isolated, but <clears throat> if problems, if problems persist and complaints mount, the DNR will investigate. Um, you just mentioned there's you know, a couple of best management practices that the DNR has promoted in the past are to limited <clears throat> nutrient inputs, which are lawn, come from lawn fertilizers and promoting vegetation buffers along the shorelines. Right. Uh, Connors Creek Bridge, I spoke with Kyle Marinoff, he's a recreational supervisor down from Flambeau. He said at this time, the bridge repair is with DNR engineering uh, and getting pushed through for capital funds to be used. Um, the, it's been placed on the emergency list However, the process for approval and contracting with a company can take several months. Uh, they are pushing this repair and not sure if the bridge will be operational for snowmobiles until early or mid fall. Um, that's the best current information we have right now. So if something comes up, we'll certainly bring it up. Right. Is it possible just to keep that on your report? Sure, sure. sure. So we can track it. But thank you. And then um, I'm going to let Josh handle the elk harvest question. Uh, I know Brian Bassana kind of touched on. Uh, some of the uh, uh, changes that were implemented in the past, but there was more to it, and that's why I brought in Josh here. So we'll kind of talk about that at the end. So, okay. Uh, Forest 10 Caterpillar, uh, an aerial flight was done from the Birchwood and Russ County area on June 23rd, and there was no observable damage from the air that could be mapped. However, <clears throat> Paul did note that there's a moderate amount of damage uh, on the Bass with um, Linden Looper. Uh, most of the damage was observed in Russ County, but there's likely that that extends up into the uh, Stony Hill Road area also. Uh, customer service at DNR facilities as of yesterday, uh, everybody that was working from home had returned to the office. Um, however, the, the Hayward Service Center and the Winter Ranger Station will remain closed to the public until further notice. Why is that? Uh, that comes from Madison. That's out of our, it's out of our control. I mean, at the, um, there's been some talk and like if you can make like an individual appointment, if you want somebody specific that you want to talk to, you can make it an appointment. Right. But as far as when those counters are going to be open, that's kind of out of our hands. And we'll, we'll, we won't know until Madison makes that determination. Okay. Yeah, right now they've they've just focused on the in our headquarters stations, which would right. be Spooner, Rhinelander, Eau Claire, et cetera. So. Okay. Well, so like the Lady Smith one that's gonna be stakeholder yeah. correct too. Okay. Like Josh just mentioned, the Spooner area headquarters that's open Monday through Friday from 8 30 to 4 o'clock. Uh, you can also they have a phone number listed here and an online uh, contact if you wish to go through the computer. Um, forestry, our time standards on June 19th, we hit our time standards. Um, we exceeded it by 173 hours. Uh, total hours were reported were 2,362.5 versus the standard of 2,189. Um, those came from uh, about eight, eight different employees and those tasks uh, comprise of reconnaissance, timber sale establishment, bulldozer work, prescribed burns, cutting notice approvals, timber sale inspections, and closeouts. Uh, we'll have an annual partnership meeting that will be scheduled for later in the year. Uh, work projects on the Sawyer County Forest. Um, I painted uh, timber sale boundaries on approximately 67 acres located in the Coudere block. Of this, 33 acres will be aspen clear cut and 34 acres will be thin. Uh, marking on that has just started here within the last week. Uh, prescribed burn. Um, we attempted one in the Seeley Hills, but it was extinguished, extinguished as it would not carry. Uh, we'll make another attempt at this at a later date. Uh, fire suppression. Uh, there were three fires over 4th of July weekend. Each one of these were about a tenth of an acre in size. 
And during the month of June, because of a lack of rainfall, there was some wildland fire activity. There was a total of five fires reported, burning a total of 0 0.038 acres. Uh, causes were power line and equipment. Uh, statewide, there were 137 fires in June, mounting to a little over 60 acres, bringing year to date total uh, to 1,941 acres. Uh, there was a request made from Minnesota for, because of their dry fire conditions, uh, three engines were sent over and those crews are returned. Uh, parks and Recreation, on the Tuscovia Trail, uh, Avis has begun fever mitigation work uh, in Sawyer and Price counties. Uh, this contract is paid for by the DNR and they will work until October 29th. Uh, this consists of trapping beavers, removing dams, and unplugging culverts. Can I chip in real quick on that? Roy? Sure. Yeah, this is a, a really positive thing that, uh, that we got through. DNR worked pretty hard to get the funding. We've been battling beavers on the Pistovia since the county took it on. And you know, we've been debating. We could have got APHIS, but we didn't want to spend our maintenance money on it. So we, we finally finally got some traction and, and DNR is able to secure, secure funds to take care of that. So this will this will have a, a huge positive impact on our trail maintenance, solve a lot of a lot of issues. So this is that, that's a big deal. Good. Also I got a question too. Um, is there anything that these uh, local townships can get with help from the DNR on trap and beaver? I mean every, they're getting to be a big reason. Everything would go through APHIS, so that's all contracts. Um, that's actually one of one of uh, USDA Wildlife Services common contracts. Yeah. Is local municipalities doing road work culverts and uh, right away work to, to damage roadways, but all the payment comes from the local township. The DNR doesn't assist with any payment. I know because they're they're awful expensive though. I right. contacted them. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, that issue is occurring everywhere. There's not much the DNR can do because right now, fur prices are dropping and trappers aren't going out on their own to take care of them like they used to. Luckily, we're finding some local trappers that will yep. come out and trap them for us at so much reasonable rate. rate. Yeah, so yep. that's one good thing that helps. But I was just wondering about that. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Chippewa Flowage, uh, there was a weight boat ordinance passed by the town of Hunter and the town of Eward uh, that essentially limits the size of a weight boat to produce. Um, the state will not be involved in the enforcement of this ordinance at that time. And I called Kyle and said, why I didn't hear back from him. Um, if you want more information, uh, he just suggested to contact the township specifically. And fisheries, um, Skeeta Brook, a uh, survey was recently completed uh, to evaluate the effects of uh, dam failure from a year ago. Um, water temperature was measured at the site of failure, which was 82 degrees. Uh, at the stream crossing at the Skeeta Brook Road, which was 70 degrees. And at the stream crossing at Porky's Road, which is at 59 degrees. Uh, there's enough water. Uh, and shade, you know, enough groundwater and shade on the stream bank. By the time the water currents arrive down to Porky's Road, uh, there is suitable trout habitat. Um, however, um, the overall effects from that dam failure is that there's less available habitat for trout in terms of water temperature and structural habitat. Um, Looking at the structure in the stream, a lot of the deep holes and habitat structures, which were the habit half logs, were filled in with stand, were, were filled in with sand. Uh, DNR staff is currently working with the landowner on how to address dam abandonment to come to a resolution. Uh, currently, the beavers have rebuilt the dam at the site of dam failure. As far as fish populations, um, starting at the confluence with the Namatagan River, uh, most Fish species were composed, composed of brown trout and some brook trout by a margin of 10 to 1. Further up the stream near the Birkbeiner uh, Bridge, uh, there's more brook trout than brown trout by a margin of 10, 2 to 1. And at the Mosquito Brook Road crowd Crossing, they didn't go up that far, but there's likely few trout present. 
And uh, I'm just going to turn it over to Josh and he'll address the, uh, the elf question that we had from the last time. Any other issues that people yeah, want to have? Yeah, and I can, since you just kind of had Mr. Paulson wants to have other slides. Very good. Thank you. So now we have the forum, but we don't have we can go back and prove it. It's okay. Um, so just to extend on what Roy just covered, the uh, the uh, Mosquito Brook issue we're dealing with, I've been working with, with Max and our, our dam safety engineer, Jake Drockner, on that issue as well. Um, and uh, we are running into some issues with the landowner who continues to um, continue to want to um, uh, maintain his flowage upstream of the previous dam. Um, we are able to go in and remove that dam. Uh, Fisheries, I believe, is going to work on that. They can they can access it through our Mosquito Brook property and walk upstream and remove that dam uh, by by state administrative rule. We have that authority, but we cannot trap any beaver until we get landowner permission. So it's going to be kind of a continuous battle of pulling it out. Uh, to keep that that water flowing, uh, which Max said is, is pretty critical for that brown trout population in that area. It's, it's one of the best spawning grounds for brown trout for the Mamakaji River system. So, uh, pretty important uh, stream when it comes into that. So, um, on to the elk side of things. Um, I know I know Roy's kind of kept me in the loop asking questions, etc. Here recently, but um, as of the May uh, Natural Resources Board meeting, I want to say May 26th, that was, they approved the elk quota for this season at eight. Um, that was per our DNR recommendation. Our elk advisory committee and wildlife leadership team uh, approved that recommendation of eight and sent it to the board for, for their approval. Um, I know there were some questions people, kind of the common notion is, is the program failing? Is it going backwards, et cetera? And the answer is no. So in 2019 or prior to 2019, um, our state administrative rule read that uh, the elk harvest was tied to 5% of the population estimate. Um, in 2019, we were able to remove that. And basically the language states something similar to the DNR elk advisory committee and team has the ability to recommend what they feel is best for the population. So uh, in all likelihood in 2018 and 2019, we would have recommended a lower quota than 10, but we were tied to that number 10 because of administrative rule. So now we're just making the adjustment that we were hoping to make back then to, to kind of slowly go forward with it. So if there's any questions, I can answer anything further on that. Yeah, I couple. So it, yep. the quota was 10 in 2020 as well. Correct. So, so in 2020, we made a recommendation of six. The, the Natural Resources Board changed our recommendation to 10. Okay, I guess it's just for me uh, doing some basic math, if we have a harvest of 10 and that harvest has been met pretty much every year except last year. Except for last year. Great, so it was met in 2017, you know, 18, Correct. 19, and the population continues to grow. Correct. So. You know, I'm a simple guy, right? So if you're taking out 10 and the population can, continues to grow, I don't understand the logic of saying that you can't maintain that quota. So what we found running running our uh, research models this year was that population continued to grow, the bull recruitment continued to grow, but our mature bull class continued to drop. Okay. So because hunters target mature bulls, you're always going to have an influx of young animals, but your mature bulls are the ones taking the hit. Okay, that that makes sense. Yes. So then, thank you. That answers my question there. But um, my concern now is that as a hunters, they're going to see the quota drop, and they're going to be maybe less likely to submit that ten dollar application fee. So my question is, do you have any numbers since the the quota yeah registration closed for this year registration okay. closed may 31st yep we've already drawn our uh so for anyone unfamiliar with the process uh the first five years of the hunt rocky mountain elk foundation wisconsin chapter has the option to take one tag and raffle it that money then comes back to the dnr through their raffle so uh they've exercised that the first four years of the hunt here so uh for 2021 here three state hunters were drawn of the four tags the fourth one will be through Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. 
So those three hunters have been drawn, they've been contacted, and we had a uh, an application pool of about 25,200, which was down about 3,000 from 2020, but up about 8,000 from 2019. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle where we expect, we expect somewhere between 25 and 28,000. I thought we had over 35. We had 36 the initial year. Yeah. So the, the initial 2018 hunt, which we expected first year, everyone's excited. You know, uh, they kind of put their pot in. In 2019, I believe we had 18,000. And then in 2020, we had 28,000. Uh, and then this year was 25. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Good. Does that any more questions for the DNR? The only other thing I'd like to bring up that's that's pretty pertinent to Sawyer County and um, that kind of just just came through the pipeline. If anyone's in tune with the Natural Resources Board, but um, this year the the Sawyer County Seed Act, the County Deer, County Deer Advisory Council uh, recommended um, a quota of forty one thousand twenty deer or forty one hundred twenty deer uh, antlerless deer to be removed in this coming. Uh, fall hunting season with a split of 85% on private land and 15% on public land. Uh, part of that quota uh, and one of the reasons for increase was a concern of deer browsing to Sawyer County Forest, uh, all land types included in that. Um, we did hold a, I don't know if Roy covered this, I assume he did, but in, in the month of April, we held a field tour uh, off the Sealy Fire Lane uh, where our CDAC members met and talked about deer damage and impacts to forest and how they're concerned moving forward. Um, that recommendation uh, was actually cut down at the Natural Resources Board meeting at the end of June. Um, the Natural Resources Board, uh, along with five other counties in the north, cut the public land allocation in half. So that drops it down to about 1,200 tags available for public hunters uh, here in Sawyer County. So um, it, it wasn't a move that, uh, that I supported or that um, other members on the CDAC supported. Uh, actually, we were pretty strongly against it, but uh, that, was, uh, that was the final ruling by the Natural Resources Board. Okay. And, and one more comment. There, there are brook trout at the Mosquito uh, Road crossing of the road caught some there yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Some <Okay>. surveys. <laughs> yeah. Not very big. I had to throw three back. Okay. Perfect. I just know that he made the comment probably the farther you go up, probably the warmer the water. It was yeah. you know, yeah. hospitable for them to survive. And that's that's the big issue that they're looking at removing that dam because we want that water to continue flowing. The more it cools up, the more it heats up, just like a so it would be better just to have cold water throughout the stream. Yeah, I've talked to both Jake and, and uh, Max. Max about the, the dam issue there, as well as Mr. Marple. Um, okay. Um, and then lastly, uh, I suppose I can briefly touch on, on everyone's favorite, favorite topic, which is wolves. Um, so the DNR is continuing our, our wolf advisory committee. I'm not part of it, so I'm not. I'm not privy to a lot of that information, but what I do know is, is everything is still on board to hold a uh, 2021 wolf hunting season. Um, you know, we're still in the early stages of that, and they're they're also rewriting or, or updating our, our wolf management plan. So all that stuff is currently in the process, um, as well as as field work assisting in that. Okay, are we all no questions? Any more questions? Anything else you guys want to talk about? Just for me. Okay, so, thanks for the information, Carol. Thank you. All right, Jay, you're up on your conservation department update. And yeah, so this is the update from uh, really most of June here to the beginning of July. Uh, we're continuing dam operations and maintenance. Every time it rains, or every time it doesn't rain for an extended period of time, either having to open more gates or close more gates, depending on what weather does. So that's always a continuous battle throughout the uh, open water season. Um, staff did meet with uh, DAG CAP engineer on uh, future projects. Most of those are going to be sent out for part of the cost share projects. Uh, continuing to send out septic tank pumping cart reminders, 
last batch went out yesterday. Uh, so all those cards would have gone out now. There was 11 on-site inspections conducted by Tim Seidel for compliance checks and erosion control plans. Two of those included final inspections on cost share projects. Um, we have seen a little bit of influx on kind of uh, some violations um, relating to shoreline clearing and grading aspects. Uh, so we're working on some citation to those processes as well. Uh, we did finalize a shoreline protection plan and are working on another one. Uh, additional mitigation checks um, are scheduled over the next few months. Certain projects via zoning require mitigation of buffer zones or rain garden installations on certain projects. We go out the following year and do those inspections to make sure that they've been completed. Uh, two on-site inspections were conducted by Kelly Mahuda for compliance checks. Uh, some of those were part of those shoreline vegetation removal complaints, which are resulting in citations. Um, and also kind of semi uh, regret to inform because uh, she's been a great individual, but Kelly Nahuda will be leaving the Surrey County Zoning and Conservation Department after 15 years. Uh, she has found employment elsewhere. Uh, so we're continuing to work on those dynamics to fill that vacant position, potentially looking at an internal transfer and then looking at potentially hiring another zoning member as a zoning member has shown interest in that internal transfer. So, all right. Any any questions on the, the conservation department? Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Zellman. Thank you. Uh, I, my public comment was to recognize Kelly, the work she did, Jeff had the private sector in Jan, and it's sad that we, we weren't able to retain either one of them. But I um, would like to see if this committee could talk further about the role of the conservation department and maybe some attributes and advertising versus just doing an inter department or inter department transfer. Um, I guess I would see uh, an opportunity Kelly had, and I didn't hear much about, is to work more with the agricultural community, specifically with regard to rotational grazing. Um, there are some more uh, sustainable practices and not so heavily reliant on crop farming that might be more suitable for our area. And also in the area of doing more education with regard to shoreland uh, protection and mitigation and restoration. Uh, I think we have a lot of great lakefront and instead of always being behind the times doing enforcement after clearing or grading has already been done. Being that Sawyer County doesn't really have an active um, lake association for countywide, uh, I think that's a good role for the for Sawyer County's conservation department. So really look at the things the conservation department could be doing, not just in terms of how things have been done in the past, and then find candidates that can help bridge that agricultural and shoreland protection just the two of these. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any more on the uh, on your report, Jay? Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, Jay, is there any updates on uh, Perch Lake? I haven't heard anything. Yeah, just uh, ironically, we just got an email yesterday from the PLFA, Perch Lake Fishing Association, which operates as their lake association. Uh, they've hired SEH, uh, short. Henderson, out of uh, I believe they're out of Rice Lake to look at, and I'm not sure why but they they want to look at the reasons why Perch Lake is rising. Um, for those that don't know, Perch Lake is a is a seepage body of water located out in the town of Winter. Uh, the seepage lakes throughout Wisconsin have been on the radar over the last decade with the ebbs and flows of basically groundwater maintenance. Uh, seepage lakes have no influx, they have no streams running into them, they have no streams running out of them. And when we have these amount of rains that we've experienced, groundwater starts to rise, overland flow of that water starts to go into that system. Uh, it's almost like a you know mini watershed, it's a mini lake basin that's contained there. And there's nowhere else for that water to go, so it continues to rise. Um, but they're wanting to do a study as to why it's rising. Um, but I'm thinking that they're formulating that to get to an end result and that end result being again potential diversion of that of that water so it's still at high levels compared to it, it is yeah it um luckily in mean, this year so far knock on wood has been below average rainfall uh, we 
generally see some of our heavier rainfalls here between now and August, but we'll see what happens over the next month and a half. See what we get for annual precip. But it um, from last summer to this spring, it, it had decreased around six inches. Okay, now, that has probably gone up another inch or two in the last month or so, but um, it has gone down since last year. Okay. Any more questions for, for Jay? I I don't see any USDA report or in uh, Susan added Mr. Biz and that's not online, is it? No. Okay. So why don't we, if it's okay if everybody jump back and approve the minutes from the June meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. From okay. The I'll second. All right. Motion has been made and second to approve the uh, June meeting meeting minutes. Any more discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, now we can go, if everybody's okay with it, the item 12, the potential use for the American Recovery Plan funds. And have you guys been updated on what the money can be used for? Okay. So, I guess, Mr. Hoff, you want to kick it off or do we want to just turn it over to the yeah, I can uh, gang of three there. Um, just as introduction, you know, we've talked about this at the county board level, but uh, we've had this item on each uh, committee agenda. Um, we did have a meeting of department directors where we touched on it. Um, you had asked if I sent out information and I, I don't recall if I did or not. I tried to look up an email, but I didn't find one. But there is a lot of information out there and it changes quite often. Um, but uh, again, we've got uh, an opportunity uh, to use these recovery funds, 3.2 million, of which we have uh, received half of that so far and the other half next year um, for uh, mitigation efforts for the COVID pandemic um, and um, some other things. So there's like six broad categories um, of things that we can use those funds for. So department directors are on the lookout for uh, things through their professional organizations. So there's been a lot of talk um, amongst other counties, uh, staffs about uh, potential uses. So we've, we've got those funds available. Uh, certainly committee ideas, if you want us to look into uh, anything specific, we can do that. Um, and then uh, department directors, as they run across things uh, in their organizations that uh, might be useful, we can uh, bring those forward as well. So this will be on the table, obviously. Um, you know, uh, we can spend these funds at any time. Uh, what we're hearing is, you know, there's not a, a big rush since the rules aren't even final yet. We've got until 2024, the end of 24, to commit the funds and the end of 26 to fully extend the funds. Um, so that's kind of the introduction, and we'll be talking about this and so we spend $3.2 million. All right, so gentlemen, do you have any ideas on how recommendations on how you would spend the money? I'll talk a little bit at the department head meeting, and so it really kind of depends at, at the end. I know broadband was one of the main focuses of that. And I think that is probably a, a good allocation of those funds. Um, but if there was additional money available towards that 2024, 2026 era, we were wondering, okay, well, what else can we spend it on? Uh, there was potentials for allocating some of that money to repair failing septic systems and failing wells. Uh, that would be something that I'd be semi-interested in on the, on the septic side of things. Uh, Wisconsin used to have what's known as Wisconsin funding. You met these certain criteria that your system was in a category one type failure, was installed before 1971, and you made less than like $35,000 annually as a, as a household. You could get some money back from the state. Now, those criteria are really hard for people to meet, be it that some of these systems are put in the 80s, well, that they're automatically kicked out of those requirements. So the Wisconsin funds have been petering off now for the last decade. Uh, but if there was some pool left of that money, the county could do an in-house type of grant process for that money to give to lower income families with failing septic systems. Probably something you want to handle in the treasurer's department, uh, put some type of lien or restriction that it's a 
zero percent or very low interest rate and give these families the ability to pay back the loan within 10 to 20 years if they can't pay it back then maybe put something as a deed restriction that when the property was sell it has to go back to the county or something along those lines but if there was additional money out there putting it towards rail and septic systems i think would be a good idea does that qualify well, the devil's in the details. You know, we've got you know the six broad category, just like broadband. It's like, well, you can use it for broadband, but you can use it for broadband if it meets certain speed requirements, if it's an underserved area, right. those types of things. Same thing with the water and sewer infrastructure. It qualifies, great. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, you know, in, in the details, it talks about those things that are eligible for um, Safe Drinking Water Act or the um, Clean Water Fund Act. So, you know, you've got to read through those other programs to find out what qualifies for those to see if it qualifies for this. So that's why I say it's uh, a lot of details involved in that, but that's certainly something that, you know, we can look into further to see if those things qualify and then we can put that on the list. Greg, what about the Hatchery Park? Well, we've, we've certainly got a number of, I mean, they're, they're smaller projects, but, uh, you know, we haven't been able to put much much funding into that you know, historically uh, on the zoning and conservation we couldn't put a lot of money into it we're kind of in the same mode with, with our budget line so i mean i've got a number of different projects that we can put together for, for infrastructure that i think ties in with the, the tourism end of this thing as well um, we've got infrastructure for, for forest roads things like that um, got a lot of options so you know, you just have to Mentioned so to see how the rules, rules pan out. Um, I've got a couple of issues with with uh, abandoned wells that have come up recently that we have to cap as well. I mean, I think we can play with, with the water and a bit on that too. So um, we've got a few different things. I, I don't have any real specifics right now, but we, we've got some projects that we can throw in. So how are how, how are we going to track these ideas? Well, we are keeping a list of, of these things that uh, come up, uh, Health and Human Services. We didn't talk about it at the meeting last night, but one of the directors uh, of the division there um, had some things that uh, were supplied in her report. So we're compiling those and then, you know, we'll need to figure out right. what works and what doesn't. And, right. um, so we've, we've got a master list. Okay. I, I think I saw somewhere where parks could qualify because of COVID relief, because of the lack of use because of COVID, things like that. So the fish hatchery to me would be a good place to put a little money anyway. How about from their surveyor, your departments, any ideas? I don't know, to me the biggest thing there's still for where we're trying to work, especially for the survey department, is broadband and cell coverage. I mean, we could work <coughs> we 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 passed with we've got cell coverage now for their equipment and stuff and you know I I bet you forty percent of the county still doesn't have to use the cell coverage. So we we kind of go like that falls within the parameters of it. And broadband we hear over and over for you know, especially people trying to move the area and stuff. We'd have a whole lot more people who got women here right. than broadband so they can work from home. The, I talked to a real estate agent and he said if you don't have broadband, your house is uh, worth about 20 to 40, 30 percent less. So, yeah. Ms. Zomer, did you have a comment for this yeah, section? Um, for uses of the ARPA funds, please add to the list. Um, um, if it's along the lines of uh, safe drinking water, uh, I'd like this committee to reconsider its past denials of a countywide municipal wellness protection ordinance. Uh, I really think, you know, you can talk broadband all you want, but if, you, if a business wants to come to Hayward and there's a problem with the water supply, uh, broadband is kind of secondary. Mm -hmm. So especially since ARPA has specified public water supplies, I'd like to bring that back. Would you entertain putting that on a future agenda? Okay. Jake, you want to just take a look at that and come back with a recommendation? I can certainly look at it again. Last time we had that discussion was about two years ago. Right. And we kind of came to somewhat of a discussion point that 
towns can also do this. Towns right. can enact their own wildlife protection ordinances. I mean, so far, no town has wanted to. No town has asked whether or not they want, or if there could be a county-wide one. And really, to take on that additional project, the zoning conservation, I, I wouldn't have the time to do anything with that. But yeah. all right, would you I can look into it a little bit more. Yeah. Back to yeah. I, I really think, especially if, if you're going to put the energy into the actually a program to look at individual private wells and septic systems, which would be far more expansive than addressing the municipal wells we have in here in this other county. Uh, it would probably be easier to tackle the municipal law and ordinance. And the reason for having a countywide one is that it's at the county level that land use permits are issued and zoning decisions are made. The towns don't do that. The towns don't have the ability to do their own individual ordinances, and that's why I'd like to bring this back. Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Any more comments on potential uses of the American Recovery Plan funds? Okay, anybody have any comments for the good of the cause, as I say? Anything you want to put out for future items? If not, thank you, everybody. We're adjourned. See you next month. Jesse, do you use hard time?